this right here, this is what life's all about. Walking out of the woods, early morning, raining, big old dead gobbler on your shoulder. This is why we wake up at four o'clock in the morning every day. Before the season started, there was two gobblers spending time on our home farm. The bird that had initially caught my eye was a bird we called Yellowbeard. Early in the spring, he was all over our trail cameras. And there was no denying he was an old trophy gobbler. <laughs> the other bird, as we end up calling him, was no slouch either. These two old mature birds forced all the other gobblers out of the area. And we went the entire spring without getting a single picture of a Jake. We had multiple snowstorms in April that seemed to have no effect on the birds. and we were getting almost daily trail camera activity. The two old gobblers even at times hung out together. But as the season got closer, Yellowbeard moved on and the other bird took over the farm. The small clover plot and watering hole he was using is in the corner of the sea field, an area we've talked about a lot in our videos. Some of my greatest deer hunts have come from that corner of the property. And I've killed multiple birds there as well. I had simply missed. What happened? Did you see him go flop? And even though I had missed gobblers before, this one was by far the most disappointing. I felt pretty confident about it, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it was a, it was a perfect, it was a setup. I mean, I was, I was, perfect setup, bad film, bad shot, it didn't come close. It just went high. You can see on the tree, I just shot high. We had had an awesome hunt together the day before, and Dylan capped it off with a perfect shot with his new 410.
sound like they heard the one. So I don't usually use box calls, but there's some birds hammering like, eh, probably four or 500 yards away, maybe even farther. Right now? Oh, you can hear that. <laughs> this, this is also my life. That, that's, that's the bird that I probably missed yesterday <laughs> at our spot right now. But that's okay, because that means you feel safe strutting around out there. And that's where I plan on hunting tomorrow. All morning long, that gobbler I missed the previous day strutted around in my food plot without a care in the world. That next morning, there was multiple birds gobbling on the farm, but there was also multiple hens. Our aggressive tactics didn't work out that morning as the birds ended up going silent after a few hours. A little bit different conditions. This is the first day we've had rain for the season. Uh, it was calling for heavy rain, but it keeps getting pushed back farther and farther. Right now it's just drizzling. And I almost decided to sleep in, take a day off, maybe work on video editing. But last night on the Tacticam, 20 minutes before fly up, that bird was strutting right by our food plot. I'm gonna take a minute to uh, to enjoy that. I know you can't really hear it because of the rain, but that was special. I missed that bird three days ago at 50-ish yards. Shot right over his head. And I missed him and I felt bad about it because it was a perfect hunt. I had Isaac with me. Everything was, everything was perfect, and I got excited and rushed the shot when I had worked him perfectly. I rushed the shot, shot over his head, it was too far, there was a lot of things that went wrong, but that was on me. Uh, that was all on me. I messed that up, because I enjoy this so much that it, uh, I'm shaking a little bit. Sometimes it just gets you, it gets you, you know, and 
this bird. I probably rushed a shot a little bit as well. But, you know, he was coming underneath my blind, and he's done that a couple times. Where he's There's a, there's a cell camera underneath this blind where he strutted out and went underneath the blind, and there's a hen out behind me. I didn't... I didn't want the opportunity to go away, but my shot was eight yards max. Let's go get him. Let's go pick him up. That is by far the biggest spurred bird that I've ever killed. That is, that's a hammer, boys. That is a hammer. Well, guys, there he is. I'll have Luke take some better pictures, but it's not yellow beer. And I know there's, we've talked about yellow beer a lot, a gobbler that's been on this farm. He was a bird that I wanted to hunt, but oh boy, I took a quick look at the spurs on this thing, and he's an old bird. He is an old bird. I just want to take a quick second. I know the camera's getting wet, and it's raining like crazy, but I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank everyone who actually watches our show and uh, puts up with all my crap. I know my brother's and my buddies do. They put up with a lot of crap. Toting cameras around and checking cameras, hanging stands, all that stuff that we do that I get on about. But mornings like this are why we do it. And Isaac called it this morning. I told you in the video when I was driving over, I only kill my birds when I'm hunting alone. And when Isaac's not there, or when no one's there, but that's just the way it works. And this bird is, he's a stud. He's, you know, we can't age turkeys. Well, you always talk about that. People think they can age turkeys. You can tell what a Jake is. You can tell what a two-year-old bird is. Once their spurs hook out and they start breaking them off and regrowing them, you don't know what they are. And this guy's beard is not that long and it's thin, but he's got the longest spurs I've ever seen on a bird. So I know that he's an older bird. He gobbled on the roost about 10 times real quick. I did, gave a little yelp, silence. I knew he was roosting down there. He was roosting somewhere along this ridge because that's where he was hammering. I got him on cell cam last night strutting right there. He was strutting right there last night. So I knew he was here and when he gobbled and I gave him a little soft yelp and he shut up, I knew that he was still there. Now whether he would go down this valley and around, hang up on top, I knew it was raining and I knew the field was going to be a destination. The hen was already out there and I just looked over at the perfect time out the window of the Radix and there he was coming in. You know, I wish he would have been able to walk out or strut out into the field or food plot so I could get some better video of the kill shot and stuff. But when you're filming alone and these birds are hawk-eyed like they are, you got to do what you have to do. But that's why I thank you guys. This right here, this is what life's all about. Walking out of the woods, early morning, raining. Big old dead gobbler on your shoulder. This is why we wake up at four o'clock in the morning every day. Grind it out. I love it. Love it. <laughs>